All right, guys, we're going to get right back into the episode and we're going to pick it up back in the child hall when they get everything situated. Now, I'm also going to finish covering Calvin Piper and White Castle, the rest of that situation. So let's get started. All right, let's get this situation secure. Warden on his way down. Now, while everybody on the floor laying face down, Link over there leaking out, a lot of other dudes in here hurt. The CEO talking about, let's get this situation secure because the warden on his way down. Now, let's call for medical or render aid to some of these guys. Now, I can't be exactly precise about the time limit that it took Warden to get here, so I'm just going to say somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Now, when the Warden get here, he got me fooled. Yo, what the hell going on? It got hurt and mace in here. Get the goddamn medic down here now. Now, me and the whole crew on the floor like, all right, Warden coming here handling business. He might not be so bad after all. Now, while the Warden waiting on medical to get here, he walking up and down down looking at the inmates. After the warden come back from by the table settings, he comes back towards the door where we at. Hey, any of you guys hurt? Any of you guys need medical? No, sir, warden. Just our friend over there. Some guys just attacked him, warden. Do you guys know which inmate attacked him? No, sir, warden. We were just sitting there and the guy came up behind us. Okay, we'll take care of him. And if you guys show you don't need medical, get up and make your way back to your block. Go ahead. Now, in an all-out brawl like this, every inmate in here is supposed to write a statement. That's mandatory. Even even if you don't write nothing, but I ain't seen nothing on that statement. But instead, he passed us on our shoulders and tell us to make our way back to our block. So we get up and make our way back to the block. Now, as we walking back to the block, I mean, Drill cutting up. He losing it behind Link. Man, G, that's my girl, brother, bro. Now, at the time, he introduced Link as his homeboy. I never knew Link was his brother-in-law. So he cutting up and I'm trying to calm him down. Hey, G, look here. While I'm on the hall trying to calm Drill, down, I hear somebody call me and it's little Jamie who I know from another prison that works as a medical orderly in this prison. What's up, little Jamie? Hey, man, your boy woke. Man woke? Yeah, man, he woke, man. Hey, bro, but I'm gonna tell you, man, your boy got a lot of issues, bro. So when little Jamie called me, he tell me Melden woke up, but he tell me he got a long road. He gonna be in the infirmary for a while. Mel gotta go through a lot of rehab. Say, Jamie, I need a big favor, bro. What it is? Holler at me, man. Man, I need you to see if you can get me in there for a visit, man. Man, give me a minute. Let me see if I can pull that together. I'm going to holler at you on the door. All right, bet, homie. So after I finish talking to little Jamie, we get back on our walk to the block. Now, I'm going to take us up two hours when we back on the block and we sitting there chilling. Hey, man, get a job. Where you at? Now, C.O. Baker walks in and he calls my number and my name. Now, I'm wondering what the hell this about. Now, this about to mess y'all head up because it messed my head up as well. Hey, that's me, C.O. Baker. Boy, I need to see you. Boy, I need to see me. Hey, fellas, I'm going to be right back. So I leave off the line walking with Baker. Now we walking, he ain't saying nothing, and I'm nervous as hell because I don't know what this about. So when we get halfway up there, I turn to him and say, hey, Baker, what's going on? I just left the warden like two hours ago. You know when they had that little child hall brawl. I can't tell you nothing, son. You got to talk to the warden. Now, I'm really nervous now. Now, the closer we get, the more jitters I'm getting in my stomach. So we get to the warden office. Go ahead and have a sit down. I got something very important to discuss with you. Well, son, today uh, at Workforce, an unfortunate accident happened. And a guy that we later found out was a close relative to you, which is your first or second cousin. Uh, he was really severely hurt. He didn't make it, son. Now, while he explained this to me, I'm sitting there like, huh, what the hell is he talking about? Then he really throws me for a loop with the next part. Now, by your aunt being an employee of this facility, she can't sign the proper paperwork that we need to go ahead and expedite this situation and start the process. Now, I'm lost as hell. I'm not lost on what they trying to do. They trying to get me, if this was my relative, to sign some paperwork so they can go ahead and process his body and just ship it home and come up with a lie to tell the outside family. Warden, I I'm not sure, but I think you might have the wrong person. So he immediately picks up my file. Aren't you such and such, date of birth, this, 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 and that? And I'm like, yeah, that's me, but I don't have no family family here in this facility. Not locked up with me. For sure, not an aunt here. Son, I just talked to your aunt a few minutes ago, son. 
It's you. Hey, get Fisher up in here. So he getting frustrated now. So he pushed the intercom and he tell his receptionist, his secretary, wherever she is, to get CO Fisher up in here. Yes, sir, Warden. Fisher, would you go walk Miss Naomi back down to my office, please? So a couple minutes later, Fisher come walking in the office and Warden tell him to go get some woman named Naomi. So about 10 minutes passed by and Fisher and the station nurse come walking in. Now the same station nurse, I went to go find out about Gargamel condition and she looked at me and just walked off. Now, Miss Naomi, is this or isn't this your nephew? You really don't know who I am, huh? Now, this woman looks at me and say, you really don't know who I am, huh? Now, I'm scared because I'm thinking they trying to set me up or something. You know why when you was talking to me up in there, I walked off? Because I'm looking at my own nephew and he going to look at me like he don't even know who I am. Your mother name is and your grandfather name is Yes, ma'am. I'm your mother's baby sister, Naomi. Now, I know a lot of you saying, how in the hell he don't know his own auntie? So she actually started breaking it down to me. You know, have your mama ever told you the story about her sister that went to foster care? And immediately, I knew who she was because I didn't heard the story a million and one times. Now, I actually met this auntie, but I was so young. After we get that established that she's my aunt, but it ain't no big family reunion. Now, she get on to this cousin situation. Me me and your mother's second cousin, Denise. Do you know who Denise is? Yeah, I know who Denise is. That's Eddie's daughter. Right. Well, that is her son, Michael. Now, Denise been passed away. Now, I knew she had a little boy, and I knew his name was Michael, but he's much, much younger than me. I never really associated with him, hung with him. They grew up on a whole different part of town, actually a better part of town than we did. Now, this is where the bullshit come in. My own supposedly aunt with the warden gang up against me to pressure me to sign some papers so the outside family don't have to come in and sign these same papers They're Therefore, ask any questions on what really happened to Michael. Now, I get to telling my auntie and the warden, I don't know this person very well. I don't even know my auntie. So I ain't doing that. I don't want no part of that. When I tell you they continue to try to pressure me to do this, hollering about they didn't reach out to all the next of kin and his file, and they can't get in touch with nobody, a lot of disconnect numbers and all this kind of stuff, and put the pressure on me hard. Now, in a respectful way, I kept declining. So I think this is where my problem started with the COs and the warden. Now, my so-called auntie get mad and walks off. I would never say this about family if it wasn't true, auntie. So after she walk off, you can see the warden catch her attitude. Okay, M.A., you can go. Now, I'm looking at the warden and how his demeanor didn't change, but I don't react to none of that. I just get up and leave out there and head back to the block. Now, all the way back to my line, I'm just thinking about how messed up that situation was. Come on, come on, come on. She about to walk in the yeah, come on. Now, as I'm walking, I see KJ and them on the hall with weapons out and they peeping around L. Now, I kind of fall back a little bit, not because I'm trying to creep up on them or see what they doing. I don't want to mess up whatever they got going. Now, once KJ and them go creeping down L, I go up behind them. But when I get on L, something catch me off guard and distracts the hell out of me. Say night, bro. I heard James was going to try to get at you. Now, when I get up by the first cell, I see two dudes who I know. One of named Contrell and one named Kyrie and both of these dudes from Fairfield the same place Knight from. Now what's the crazy thing? Every time Knight about to go in somebody's cell, these dudes somewhere close around. These dudes been taking advantage of a mentally ill person. They in the cell juicing Knight Oh, uh-huh, bitch. Uh -huh. Grab that bitch Rhonda. Don't let her go. I see Rhonda and another queen come out of somebody's cell. Now, Rhonda and them ain't had a clue KJ and them was on that hall. Now, when the queen they called Dab come out the cell, KJ and them light into his ass. But Rhonda come tearing up out the cell like a football player. Blow right past me, and they go in pursuit. They try their best to catch Rhonda. Now, they chase Rhonda all the way to Rhonda line. When they get there, KJ and them stop. They ain't stupid. They know Rhonda got back up on that line. Now, I don't know this Queen Ronda personally, just through skinny, but I know that's the type of person, if you go at him, you better get him. Now, this situation with the Queens, this actually was the last thing that happened this day, so I'm going to go ahead and take us up to the next day. When I say wake up, you say get to it. Wake up. Get, get to it. it. Okay, okay, inmates, y'all know what to do. Don't make a goddamn sound. We got some new inmates coming in. Come on, put a move on and get your asses on in here. Now, this morning when C.O. Verhausen 
gonna wake us up we got about five new inmates coming in now when i see these guys come in i don't see nothing special about none of them they average size and average looking dudes so co Verhausen do his roll call then he dismisses us and he take all those guys with him none of those guys end up being on our line now when everybody get they self together you don't see dudes busting out to go to child today you see everybody coming out they cell and going straight to a table to sit down on their best behavior and about 45 minutes later commissary day all right fellas it's commissary day now if you hear your name you eligible to go to commissary and for those of you this your first time going to commissary we go to commissary by blocks now commissary day that's the day you see dudes sitting around behaving they self like they got sense because they don't want to miss that commissary now commissary day also the day you see all kind of bullshit go down so co spencer gives us the rundown we go to commissary after e block now while i'm waiting on the fellas to walk up i'm looking around at these dudes they jolly they laughing and talking they ain't got a problem with a soul in the world they good wholesome clean christian dudes today jesus it's that day today baby new jack walking towards me when they get there we all sit down now we couldn't have been sitting at the table no longer than about three or four minutes hey big homie we see two dudes hauling ass towards us hollering big homie now at the time me and the crew think they talking about somebody else until they get a little bit closer hey ain't them the dudes we seen little roger with hey man what's up hey Say me, brother. Hey, say Roger got into it with a dude named Brock and his crew. Now, two of the little dudes we seen Roger with, they come running on J line. I mean, they out of breath. Now, as soon as we hear Roger's name, in the fellas get up and take off. Now, the one named Meshack, what he was trying to tell us is Roger then got into it with a dude named Brock and his crew. So instead of Roger and the dude involving their crew, him and Roger decide to fight one on one. Now, the little dude Meshack say him and Roger then had about three, four fights. And Brock punish Roderick every time. Oh, stay home and stay home with the deal, man. What's going on? Now, when I get over there, dude beating the snot out of Roderick. Now, immediately looking at dude, I see he way more seasoned than Roderick. Now, I'm speculating. Roderick looked at dude and seen dude tall and slim. And he seen dude look like they can be the same age. And he thought he had a win. Now, once him and dude got into a fight and the dude beat him up, shit, Roderick got too much pride. You gonna have to beat him up all day, every day. Now, understand the difference about a seasoned convict and a dude that done did some time. See, a seasoned convict, his bones didn't harden. He got heavy bones and plus he got more superb skills. And that's what this dude got over Roger. But he not seeing it like that. This between me and him, this ain't got nothing to do with you. I tell no lies. This man talking to me and still on top of Roger pounding the shit out of him. Now, Roger on his side. Now, what it looks like he's trying to do to me is maneuver to his stomach, get his knees under him so he can get up. Now, I start playing my mind games with dudes cause I know convicts this gonna play with his mind and his ego and he just gonna let Roderick up man y'all see that huh see that's what a nigga with no heart do once they get you on the ground they try to pound you cause they scared to let you up Ooh, get up nigga what come on Roger, get up man now when him and Roderick get back to their feet Roderick throw his set up he ready to go in again say homie you got my little brother about 40 50 pounds man now I'm messing with dude head bad I'm using the old convict trick on him say man your little brother did this man he was popping and all that gangsta gangsta shit all to my dog and my dog put it on his ass. Y'all hear this shit? Man, it don't sound like that's your dog. Sound like y'all fucking. Say, homie, hey, now you get real disrespectful, boy. It ain't nothing to disrespect a bitch. Now, I knew when I said that, that was all it took. Say, bro, what's that? What's up with you then? Nigga, stop talking. Let's catch they remix. Now, he played right in my hand. Say, bro, let me bust this boy right quick. So, me and dude get ready to catch Roderick and his homeboy remix. Say, Mar, get ready. Now, before me and dude line up, I turn around and tell Mar get ready. So when me and dude get face to face, he a jumper. He jumping up and down. You know them dudes, they like to jump all around when they get ready to fight. Bam, bam, boom, boom. Oh yeah, I'm about to fuck all over dude. He can't fight. Now when dude swing, he hit me twice, but I ball all the way up real tight. He don't know, I'm just testing his strength. I'm running that take your heart game. Yeah, come on. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, bitch, your whole ass won't say nothing else. He didn't got super cocky. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Oh. Now I go from full guard, hit him with a rabbit punch in the 
rabbit punch days. Bam, bam, boom, boom. Now them next two jabs I hit do with, I put my whole body behind them bitches. <laughs> when I tell you that's just how I left dude, nah, I wasn't even trying to get no stripes off a of dude. I knew from the minute he threw his setup, he couldn't do nothing with me. But I knew what was gonna come next. See, you slept that ball. Yeah, you got my homie. Fight me, nigga. N -n -n nah, nah, my dog, the dog, dog tired. You, you fight me, nigga. So Brock and Mari line up. Boom, boom. I, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna run, 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 run on you. Get, get, get your step back together. Come on. Now, the first two licks Maura hit this ball with dazed the hell out of him. Now, you can see he hurt. Boo, 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 boo. All right. Now, him and Maura was just kind of hitting each other a little bit. They was both stinging each other with some good ones. But Maura hit that ball with something. Now, I'm about to knock your stuttering ass out, boy. Boo, 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 boo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Boo, boo, boo. Every inmate on the line going crazy. Maury uppercut that boy so hard when I tell you his top teeth and his bottom teeth clack together. Now when I see his homeboys, they all like this looking at us. So I go straight up to my homeboy, Roderick. Hey, little Roderick, now you got to get a transfer. Man, we just humiliated these boys in front of all these inmates. They coming for you. Now he ain't argue this time. He knew what time it was. So I told him just lay low for the time being. We dapped him down. Now we walking off Roderick line. And we hear somebody say, hey man, boy, y'all boys pretty good, man. Y'all got some nice uppercuts. I ain't never seen y'all in here before. You just got in here? It's the two white boys, Jacob and Colin. They trying to play with us. Now y'all know Jacob and Colin is the same two who turn welding out. Hey, what line you on, man? Me and my bro come hang with y'all. For sure, man. We gonna get with y'all at the commissary, bro. Now they trying their best to sound as innocent as they could. So I tell them, yeah, man, we gonna come get with y'all at the commissary. And me and New Jack just walked off. Not too long after we get back to J-Line. Commissary, line up! So we line up. And we all here at the commissary. What? Now, while we in that line walking the commissary, guess who I see? The big white boy, White Castle. He in the line heading back with a big old bag of commissary. Now, this dude just rolled somebody out. Not only should he not be at commissary, he should be in the hole. But he ain't. Now, at this time, my mind putting all kind of things together. Now, after I see this, I just kind of keep pushing. I get in the line and wait on my turn to get up there to get my commissary. Now, I'm like the fourth person in one line and across from me is Big Lamb and another. You get this right here and you get this. He behind two little dudes that's about to go up the commissary and he coaching them on what to get. Now, I ain't never seen nothing flaky out of Lamb since I've been in this prison, and I done ran across him a couple times, and he always just cool and laughing, things like that, so I thought he was a, you know, semi-decent dude, but now I'm seeing other things from Lamb. We all finish up at commissary, and we head back to the line. Now, when we get back, just like every other prison I done been in, everybody go to their spot they want to go at, and they go through their commissary, you know, stacking things how they want to stack them. Hey, I bought extra commissary, man. Who won't buy something, man? Come on, man. I know a lot of y'all couldn't get the commissary. Come get some. Me and the fellas, we at the first table getting our commissary out, just going through our stuff. And guess who we see? Crazy Steve come over there offering commissary that he bought at commissary. You know, he got extra and he won't sell it to the dudes who wasn't eligible or couldn't go to commissary for one reason or another. Oh, I'm about to come get with you, Crazy Steve. I look up and I see Tennessee saying, oh, I'm about to come get with you, Crazy Steve. So he walks over to Crazy Steve to do some business. Let me get the switch right there. Oh, yeah, I definitely want them right there, man. I ain't got no more of them. Say, Tennessee, what all you about to get, bro? Oh, shit, I'm about to rack up on that boy. I'm about to go get it, almost everything he got. Now, while Tennessee doing business with Crazy Steve, one of his homeboys walk up. Ooh, yeah. Hey, I appreciate that, Crazy Steve. Tennessee, hey, man, hey, bro, you ain't work out no payment with me, bro. Hey, hey, come on, man. Let me get my stuff back, bro. Huh? Man, hey, hold this pee. I'm gonna tell you one time, back up on me, boy. I got that. Say, Tennessee, bro, I don't want no problems with you, bro, but I just can't let you jack me all my stuff, man. Boom, boom, boom. To get some Tennessee. Boom, boom. Now, Tennessee and his homeboys, they start punching on Crazy Steve because they ain't about to give him his stuff back. They just could have really pushed the man out. Me and the fellas, we getting up. We about to go help Crazy Steve, even though we don't know him like that, but I don't never see him bother nobody. So we getting up, and today I found out why they call him Crazy Steve. Man, y'all shouldn't have did that. Ah, 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 ah. Dude, you ain't going nowhere, people. Ain't the one to shut up. Shut up.
Now, normally everybody be loud as hell, but everybody in the prison stuck. Crazy Steve just pulled out two blades and just got the swinging them bitches at Tennessee and his own boy. He got both of them. Dudes don't know what to think. We don't know what to think, and we about five feet away from him. Man, this was some crazy shit. I know why they call him Crazy Steve now. All right, guys, I'm going to end the episode here. I was intending to put this episode up yesterday, but I had a lot of issues yesterday trying to load it uh load this episode in a couple different parts i did say a lot of explicit things so you know i kind of took it down and re-edited it and now i'm gonna re-upload it now i am gonna say i did struggle with myself about putting this part in with my aunt because she has since then Call me and apologize for the way things may have looked to me. But at the end of the day, I made a promise. And that's to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And be completely transparent. So I can't talk about one thing and leave out the other. That's why I say I will add nothing and take nothing away. I'll see you guys soon.